today we have the um, amazing interview with Angela Walters. I know we've all been waiting for this for a very long time. And the day's here. I'm sitting next to her. We're going to ask her some questions. And so if you have any questions that you'd like to add into this interview, put them in as we go. And then we'll go through at the very end and make sure those get asked as well. So Angela, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks <laughs> for having me on. I appreciate it. I always love chatting. I'm extreme people person so this is like awesome <laughs> yeah I'm I'm like oh my gosh she said yes this is great I just I really want to say thank you because I know you're a busy a busy woman you've got a lot of roles and responsibilities so taking the time today means a ton um do you want to do a brief introduction of yourself sure sure so my name is Angela Walters I like to say that I'm a finisher and an encourager I love machine quilting that was my first passion that I found and then I realized oh crap I love teaching quilting <laughs> as much as quilting and so I, I want to make people love quilting as much as I do. Now, there are multiple facets to my business, but that's kind of the gist of what I love to do in the nutshell. That's awesome. Yeah, there are a lot of facets. And we're going to get into that today. I've got um, a plethora of questions sure. for you, covering sure. a lot of it. But let's start with what you're doing, um, which is quilting. When did you first get introduced into quilting? It was, it's been a minute. Um, it's so <laughs> funny because I used to be one of the younger quilters. Now I'm just the normal age of a quilter. But uh, I was 20. 22 I met my now husband and his family made quilts oh, wow. so my very first like exposure to them was at his family reunion where they give away quilts it's oh, like wow. it's like a whole thing and I won't bore you with like all Sign the details awesome. but, well you can't win unless you're born in the family <laughs> wow I'm just saying I can't win but that's fine it's okay I have enough quilts um, so I went to the reunion we weren't married yet and they were giving away these quilts and I thought oh, these are really fun wow. I kind of like them and so I asked his grandpa to show me how to make a quilt yeah. and that was kind of the first taste of it and then it just you know has grown since then but that's, that's kind of how I was first introduced to it. That's very interesting that it came from his grandpa yes. as well. It's been really cool to see other men involved in quilting mm -hmm. and to have that special bond with him and kind of learn. Absolutely. What does he think now of you know seeing where you come from? Yeah when well he, he unfortunately has passed away probably oh. it's been a while but he left a golden halo around me right because grandpa would have wanted me to own a quilt shop yeah. and grandpa really would have wanted me to have an event space. Oh. Now he he was my biggest encourager, and when he taught me how to quilt, and he actually kind of coerced my husband into buying me my long arm, um, he was so encouraging because I was the best long arming he knew, and I didn't know any better, so he loved it. I mean, he would have, if he were here right now, he would be just so tickled. He would be riding around in his hover round, flirting with everybody, and I'd be like, Grandpa, stop, I'm trying to work. Um, he would think I charge way too much for fabric, because he, he was all about the the, not even like Walmart fabric was the great wow. stuff. That was the fancy top shelf stuff. He bought his fabric at like thrift stores and stuff. Wow. So. Yeah. I did that for a few years and then I finally got into the, you know, fabric design fabric. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, there's mm -hmm. so much out mm -hmm. there. So he taught you how to learn and you kind of just learned the ropes yep. and yep. from there. Yep. Um, what is your favorite part of the quilting process? Um, well, when I'm looking at like the whole quilting, obviously the machine quilting is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I loved piecing and I would piece with grandpa and we would make quilts. But once I got that long arm and started machine quilting, I, really, I realized, oh my gosh, this, <laughs> this is my jam. And that's what's great about quilting. It's like a plethora of things and, yeah. and everybody can find their place, whether it's hand applique, whether it's binding. I don't understand why people like binding, but <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. We can yeah. still be friends, but I just, it's not my thing. But I think that's what's great about it. Yeah. I know that not everybody loves machine quilting and that's okay. But wow. that's my favorite, for so sure. So you're speaking of your long arm. Mm -hmm. um, when you are quilting, do you prefer to be on the long arm, especially when you're doing your free motion, or do you prefer to do on the domestic? Because you do both, and you showcase both. I do. I like to both. say I'm bilingual. <laughs> I can do both. Um, I, it's so funny because we hand quilted our first several quilts. Grandpa was a hand quilter. He never machine quilted a day wow. of his life. And so we hand quilted, and I'm not good at it. <laughs> and so now I should pause and say I don't have to be good at something to enjoy it. So yeah. there is that. Um, so he talked me into getting a long arm. So I went right from hand quilting to long arming and didn't know you can really quilt on your sewing machine. So I like to say, even though I'm bilingual, long arming is my first language. Mm -hmm. However, if I have a quilt that I want to start in the center, I might do it on my sewing machine. All my videos I show on a sewing machine because that's the most accessible. Oh, and wow. then also, like, if I need to procrastinate a quilt, <laughs> right, maybe I have a quilt on the long arm I don't want to work on. Yeah. Then, then the sewing machine is my favorite. That's a, that's an awesome term. We need to coin that. That's great. Procrastinate quilt. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about working from the center out, um, you kind of had this vision going into a quilt. How do you kind of formulate that when you get a quilt in and you're like, okay, how am I going to quilt it? How do you navigate 
planning it all out? Yeah. You do a lot. <laughs> and that's such a good question. And that's a common question, especially for people that are newer to it. Cause it's like, how do you know where to start? What do you do? Well, the, the bad news is it comes with practice. <laughs> and even though I've been quilting now for 20 some years, I, I still get a quilt that stumps me, right? And I mm -hmm. have to give it the side eye. I'm glaring <laughs> at it. I'm waiting for it to talk to me, but they've never talked to me. I guess I've never drank enough wine for them to talk to me. Um, but I kind of have at least one place I want to start. So if I get a quilt, if Tula gives me a quilt, she'll usually tell me her vision. Like, I want this to show. I want this to squish down. I want this secondary effect. And then I'll get started. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with having a plan and sketching it out and practicing. That's not my style, but totally fine. But I think it's really important that even if you have a plan, that you're not afraid to change it. Yeah. As you go. I know, I know that's not the question you asked, but you just got to know one place to start and you just got to get started because the best way to finish a quilt is to start it. That's a great. And then be flexible. Be I guess. very flexible <laughs> because if you have this, and I've done it, I've had this great plan, this great idea, and I get going, it doesn't look like I thought it would. It's not flowing. It's taking too long and I need to get this quilt finished. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to switch it up. Yeah. Um, so how did you even get exposed to free motion quilting? Cause like you said, you didn't know that you could do it on your machine. Um, when were you like, okay, I'm going to dive into this and I'm going to really. Well, <laughs> when, when grandpa talked my husband into buying me the long arm, I think it was because he wanted me to take over the reunion quilts because oh, he wow. made several and he hand quilted all of them. So that was like his grand plan, his master <laughs> thing. Um, and so when the machine came, I was kind of freaking out because I didn't realize you had to drive it. You didn't realize the free motion, whether you drive the machine, whether you drive the fabric, if you're in control of whatever, it's yeah. free motion. And I'd already gotten the um, pep talk, I call it, from my husband. <laughs> like, if, I, if we buy this machine, you're not going to stop <laughs> using it in a year. Well, I didn't stop using it. So there's that. So like, <laughs> I got exposed to it. And it was just like, you got to jump in. But again, I'm not a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. it's, and I get it that people that are really worried about making mistakes, it's a, it's a, a barrier to get over, but you can mm -hmm. definitely, um, I'm a people pleaser. It's a totally different neuroses, still debilitating, <laughs> but different. And so would that be, um, what you would say to someone just starting out? Um, just keep practicing. Or Absolutely. There, um, any advice you would like to give them in addition to that? So it's funny, the normal, um, process or normal progression of a quilter is we learn how to cut and sew one piece. So we make our quilt and then we learn how to machine quilt in general, not mm -hmm. always, it's not always that way, but so it's like, be very precise, measured out, measure twice, cut once, yeah. make your seams right. And then you come to my class and I'm like, just wing it. It's fine. <laughs> Echo. And people are like glaring at me like, duh, I can't do it. Um, so I think the thing is it, you're using a different side of your brain. You have to give yourself grace to mm -hmm. learn through it. Yeah. So by time, usually quilters come to me, they're, they're solidly comfortable with the piecing in general. And now I'm asking them to suck again. And it sucks to suck, right? But yeah. you, you have to learn and it, it's a it's a skill building. And so I usually tell people, especially perfectionists, you have to focus on finished, not perfect. Yeah. So I wish this quilt were finished. Yeah. I wish this swirl was finished. And after you get past that, you get a couple quilts finished, you realize, oh yeah, when you're done, mm -hmm. you don't see the individual mistakes. Yeah. You just see that overall texture. Exactly. But it's hard. I, I'm dragging people to the other side. I'm like, come over. It's fine. But I get it. They don't want to mess up their quilt. They want to wait till they're good enough to yeah. do their quilt. But I mean, I always say if you wait till you're good enough to quilt it, you might not like it anymore. Exactly. Or you so, might not have any quilts finished. You might not. You will have a lot of quilt tops, which is fine yeah. if you love to piece. But if you want to finish your quilt, you got to jump in there and go for it. Yeah. Um, so you also mentioned working with Tula. What has that been like reaching this point in your career while, while you're like working with people that maybe you look up to? in the industry. What has that been like? It's been really fun, especially with Tula, because we've kind of, I won't say we come up together because she was kind of ahead of me, but like, I mean, we would have meetings at our coffee shop oh, wow. and we'd be like, we're going to dominate. Like, what can I do? How, like just kind of thinking how we're going to build our business and like, the hustle of growing it. Mm -hmm. And now we get together and we're like, remember those coffee shop meetings? And we were so like, we're going to, we're going to build this and what can we do? Um, and so it's fun to go through the stages of that with somebody, because as you become more successful. And I, I'm so fortunate. Like yeah. I don't take anything for granted for sure, especially like even your time and your attention. But, um, you know, it's nice to have somebody that's going through that similar stuff. So I could say, Oh my gosh, I have just overextended myself. Or, <laughs> yeah. And, and so it's really fun. I kind of call her my work wife because she's the one person that truly understands all of that. I mean, yeah. of course, besides my husband and my <laughs> staff, but you know, as a friend. And so it's, it's been really fun and she cheers me on. I cheer her on. Um, it, it's really fun to get to say do life or kind of grow through that too with her yeah that's really special and you guys are both from Kansas City yep she lives so, about an hour from here in St. Joe's that's so, yeah. awesome mm -hmm. 
Um, what is your process for designing thread color? So we're gonna get back into the free motion quilting. Um, and that's a big question from a lot of people that are watching, like, how do you decide your thread color? Cause sometimes you choose things that other people may not think to choose. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. How does that come to you? Well, don't you love machine quilting? Cause you got to pick a design and then you got to decide how you're going to go about it. And yeah. then you got to pick a thread color, right? You're like, come <laughs> on, I just want to get to it. <laughs> Um, it's another choice. Uh, I love threads. So I collect threads the way a lot of people collect fabric. So I'll try not to geek out too much about threads. <laughs> but I will say, um, again, with practice, when I quilted for customers, after I got my long arm, I decided, gosh, I love machine quilting so much. I don't really want to make a lot of quilts. Mm -hmm. So I started quilting for customers and I got really good at matching thread colors. Okay. And now that I'm not um, quilting for customers anymore, I can experiment with some different, maybe a little bit more contrasting, something that makes the quilting show a bit more. Mm -hmm. So how I do have a process because I, like I said, I'm here. <laughs> now I have to tell you, I have our e-commerce fulfillment, which is downstairs. We carry every color of glide thread. Wow. So I like to walk through there and look at all the colors and just kind of pick. So I'll pick a range of colors, colors that are safe bets, colors that are like wild mm -hmm. that surely I wouldn't choose. And then there may be some that are kind of in between and then I'll lay them out and kind of start auditioning and working through it. The biggest tip I could give somebody that's like, I hate picking out thread <laughs> colors, is focus on the value mm -hmm. or the shade of it. So like if you have a light pink quilt, you can use any light neutral color and it's going to look fine. Yeah. So like a light yellow would look good, a light blue even, a light yeah. gray. Focus on that value and, and don't be afraid to experiment. And in general, I have all these rules of thumb, but <laughs> if I'm conflicted by two choices, I'm not sure which one to pick. I almost always opt for the lighter one. Oh, really? Because I think lighter thread looks better on darker fabric than vice versa. I feel like I've gotten in the rut of doing light gray. Because I'm like, mm -hmm. light gray goes with everything. Mm -hmm. And you don't really have to go through that process of trying to map it out mm -hmm. ahead of time. You're just like, it's a safe bet. So mm -hmm. maybe this is going to inspire me to change up my palette and try some different things as well. well. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, right? Yeah. I, don't, I think like sometimes getting in a routine makes you get stuff done. Yeah. And maybe you're doing it all over. You have to pick one thread color. Um, and so, like, I, I always want to be real careful that when I share what I do doesn't mean that's the only way or what yeah. you have to do. But if you want to <laughs> if you want to play with the threads, there's a lot of awesome threads out there. Yeah. Um, and speaking of your glide collection, that's the one thing that I realized during the quilt walk when we went into your store. You have so many colors to choose from, which is not, you know, there are a lot of other shops, but the selection that you guys have is amazing. I do want to, like, mm -hmm. I wanted to buy all of them, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so another thing that makes me think of is thread painting. That's another big thing of free motion quilting. How did you get into that? Because that's kind of similar, but very different at the same time. Yeah. So, I mean, I loved quilting for customers and as my business has evolved and progressed, I don't do that anymore because I just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so before it was always, how do I pick a thread color that matches the quilt top to show off their quilt, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's the most important thing. I love my quilting, but they're not paying for me to show off on their quilt, right? They yeah. want to enhance their quilt. And so as that progressed out, I remember thinking like, okay, now I can quilt a little bit for myself and I can do things that I wouldn't normally do on a customer quilt. Mm -hmm. And really the first kind of like tiptoe into that was when those national parks came out. Those are so cool. I am <laughs> such a national parks nerd. Really? I mean, I, I've got, I've got the junior passport <laughs> and I get the stamps and I make sure like if I don't have it anymore, I stamp it on a piece of paper and I tape it in there. Like I'm such a geek. So I decided to quilt those for our basement decor. Oh wow. That's, our basement is in a national park. <laughs> anyway, so I was quilting the panels and I'm like, oh, I can add detail. And it just kind of progressed. And then as I started doing the live chats, I was like, ooh, this could be a fun, teachable thing. Yeah. So thread painting, for those that don't know, I'm just using different colors of thread to add detail to a quilt. You can go really like ornate and over the top. I'm not really talking about that. I'm just yeah. talking about playing with all the different thread colors to create shading and texture and yeah. detail. But it's, it's a lot of fun. It's fascinating. And we when, when we were walking in, there's one of those out there. And I'm like, Liz, look at that. That's amazing. I feel like thread painting or the word thread painting is a little deceiving. It really should be called thread scribbling because that's <laughs> what I'm doing. Like thread doodling. It's yeah. not necessarily like painting, but it's, it's taking that panel or that fabric and and adding in it, it's a lot of fun. Wow. Yeah. I've never tried it, but maybe I'll attempt it. It does look intimidating, but well, th remember so this. Fun. It's like it's like finger paint, right? You just mm -hmm. keep lobbing it on there until you like it. Like yeah. you just keep throwing it on until it's, it's all good. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so you're active on social media and pretty much everywhere else as well. Um, and a lot of things that other quilters may struggle with is seeing quilts constantly. People are posting quilts, they're beautiful. Um, and you kind of get that sense of like, oh my gosh, is my work even like up to that standard? And you get that imposter syndrome. 
Um, and especially with your career building up to where you are, did you ever struggle with those thoughts and how did you break out of that? How did you Absolutely, persevere? absolutely. And not to stereotype, but I think that a lot of people do, especially creatives. I mean, you think about what we're putting out there as ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if it's, if it's not perceived right or if it's even a comment, I mean, I am still where a comment can wreck my weekend. Yeah. I'm getting better. Again, it's that people pleasing coming out of me. I will say to go back to the first part, when I learned how to long arm, there were no, you know, social media, no YouTube. And back in my day, <laughs> I didn't have live chat. So I, we had a forum. We had a Yahoo forum. And you log on and you're like, they show pictures. You're like, but how did you do that? So it, looking back now, like I could have benefited from some education so it took me longer to learn it. So I like to say I was self-taught. Mm -hmm. My teacher was an idiot, but she was cool. So it was fine. So it took me longer. But looking back with hindsight, I probably enjoyed it more because I didn't know any better. Grandpa mm -hmm. said I was the best quilter he knew. And I would think, well, that quilt doesn't look as crappy as the previous <laughs> one. All right, we're, we're doing good. And so when I look now to newer quilters, or I think about even myself, when I look start into a creative endeavor, mm -hmm. it is very easy to be intimidated. And I think it's, if I, gosh, I just want people to be inspired. People are showing what they're doing because they're excited and they want to inspire you. Mm -hmm. So you have got to remember that and just be inspired, not intimidated. Now I get it. I, I will say mostly for me, sometimes it's not so much the quilting because I feel comfortable, but even as I would say successful quilter, mm -hmm. uh, business person, like I still have times where I get on social media and I'm like, oh, that person's a great mom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, look, look at her. Like, oh, she's been, you know, like, so we all have those doubts, but you have to remember, like you're comparing your worst to everybody's best. Exactly. And usually as much as you would think I'm active on social media, the active I am is posting and not really reading. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like if you struggle with that, you have got to get off of there because it's yeah. not, if it doesn't feed your soul creatively, it's only going to bring you down. And I feel like that's a healthy boundary to be active, but not um, consume yourself with yes. what everybody's saying. Because yep. there's always those negative Nancys who Absolutely. just want to bring you down. Well, there's um, negative, but I also I would say most of it is not even intended to be negative. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, I, I feel like the stuff that really bothers me wasn't meant to hurt me personally. Mm -hmm. But things that you read into. Yeah, you know. or it's like, well, because the shipping to Canada is so much. And I'm like, well, I can't handle the shipping. <laughs> I can't. That's yeah. not my fault. You know, I, I can start getting upset about something that you know yeah. they didn't intend it that way so there's no there's no context exactly there are people that can be obviously but quilters are generally nice people yeah and I've never been anywhere where a quilter has been mean to my face right <laughs> yeah. so even before I was you know known <laughs> and so I think like that's that's something to remember there too yeah Th that is a very true thing that's what I've learned um I've tried different hobbies and stuff but when I really got into quilting that's one of the first things I realized quilters are just giving, kind, um, just nice people. And it's mm -hmm. a really special community to Absolutely. be a part of. Absolutely. Um, how long did it take you to be truly comfortable bringing in someone's quilt? They're sending it to you. They're putting it in your hands. They're trusting you with hours of work, my, uh, money, love, all of that. Um, how long did it take for you to be comfortable? That's a good question. I've not been asked that one. <laughs> um, so it's hard. I have the curse of knowledge is it's hard to remember what it was like to not know that. Yeah. And so it did take a minute. I think it was such a, not a struggle to get business, but like I didn't have a, I didn't have a quilter group around me. So when I decided to do it for business, I thought oh, I should probably join a guild. I yeah. should probably. So I had to build up that, that community around me first. Mm -hmm. And I mean, so here I am 23, <laughs> like, I really want to quit your quilt. You should let me quit your quilt. And they were so nice. So by the time I finally got one, I wasn't nervous. I was just so freaking excited yeah. to get it. So I've never been one to think about all the bad things that could happen. Mm -hmm. I'm an internal optimist until I, until I'm a, I'm a fast thinker though. So I'm like, this is great. And then if I start going, it's like, <laughs> but, um, and so I, I just, I went for it. So I would say it was probably a year, year and a half, um, before I truly felt comfortable, but that's not to say there's still things that will scare you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what business you're in. It, there's always going to be those steps that you make that are going to scare you. When you did the camera for your first yeah. live thing, you were probably scared, right? Yeah. When we went to go buy this building, I was scared. Yeah. But you have to, like, feel that fear and lean into it mm -hmm. and just, and like, okay, here we go. Let's jump 
instead of standing there looking off the diving board, it's just best to run up and, and yeah, dive in. Yeah, <laughs> just go for it, especially if it's something you're passionate mm -hmm. about, which yep. you definitely have. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing that goes into people giving you quilts is there sometimes you get a quilt and you're like, okay, I know exactly what I want to do with this. But the customer's like, mm, I want this. And you're like, but, but you go ahead and you do it anyway. Are there ever those moments where, you know, you kind of have to go with what they say, but you want to do something else? Absolutely. Think about it. It's a creative business. Mm -hmm. If I'm not getting paid, it's just a hobby, right? <laughs> so ultimately I can give my wisdom to the, my customer and I can give them my opinion, but ultimately my job is to fulfill their, their vision. Mm -hmm. Now what happens is as you get more established in your genre, people will defer to your wisdom. Mm -hmm. So if they don't in the beginning, it, it was because I wasn't making a good explanation. So I won't get into too much detail. I have a group that I mentor. So people that buy long arms from me, we have a business mentoring group. And I always tell them you can say yes and. So mm -hmm. yeah, I can do that and it's going to cost more. Mm -hmm. Or yes, I can do that, but wouldn't you love da 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 da. Yeah. Or you can just say no. You always have that option. So if somebody, the perfect example, somebody brought me a quilt back in the day, they wanted that big spiral that starts in the center and works its way out. Mm -hmm. I knew that on a long arm, that's pretty near impossible. And yeah. even if even I know it is possible, but not fun. So I just said, <laughs> you know, I said, I don't, I don't, I can't do that because I can visualize what that looks like in my head. I don't think you'll be happy with the result. Mm -hmm. And she took it somewhere else and that was fine. And she yeah. did actually come back and say, you're right. You can't, it wow. didn't look like I thought. So I think being secure in that, but that kind of goes back into that imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, what are, but I always tell her that, like, you know, your opinion mm -hmm. and you have to be secure in it. You save that fear for us, your group, <laughs> your people your mom, your tribe, whatever, you yeah. don't show it to your customer. You just like, so you have to decide. Yeah. But there's times I'm like, I know, I know it could have looked better, but that's fine. That's what yeah. they, I gave them what they wanted. And that's hard too, I'm sure to let go of, but like you said, it's a business. It's a and, business. Yeah. Um, so that's a hard part of it. Um, are there any other techniques within quilting that you want to try that maybe you haven't yet? So I just recently COVID during COVID, I picked up English paper piecing. So nice. that's my COVID <laughs> hobby. I love it. It's, which is bizarre because I don't like to bind, mm -hmm. but I will sit there and do this little bitty thing, <laughs> but I love it because I can do it. I'm not by my machine. So that's been my current thing. And I've, I'm looking forward to building off that, but I was just hanging out with Tula the other day and she's in, she's making an applique quilt. So she's getting into applique. And I was like, dang it, Tula, I just figured out English paper piecing because that's been her thing for a while. Now yeah. I got to figure out applique. Yeah. So I'm guessing by time she sends me a couple applique quilts. <laughs> That will probably be the next thing. Yeah. Have you tried foundation paper piecing? Oh, I love foundation paper piecing until I hate foundation paper <laughs> piecing, which is about three steps in. Like, I always think, is it be great? I'll get those nice sharp points. Mm -hmm. And then I put one on backwards or I get it wrong and I am pissed. <laughs> and I'm like, why did I do this? Now, I should say I'm the opposite of most quilters because I, I pay usually other people to piece for me so I can quilt. Yes. So I don't do a whole lot of piecing. Uh-huh. Well, um, maybe it'll grow on you. May if you can get EPP to grow mm -hmm. on you and you don't mm -hmm. like hand doing hand sewing, FPP is not too far behind. Okay. You can do it. I okay. know you can. <laughs> what motivated you to start your YouTube channel? So that kind of came out, you know, like when you're watching social media and you're like, well, such and such is doing it. Yep. I should do it. Peer pressure will really take you pretty far. Uh, no, I, I started just doing some videos just for fun. Just rarely. I think maybe the first three years I had it, I posted like three videos. Mm -hmm. But when I started doing the Midnight Quilt Show and classes through Craftsy, I realized, oh, okay, I was learning a lot from them. And I, I'm going to pause right here and say that <laughs> I am a lifelong learner. Yeah, I love to surround myself with people that know more than I do about things. And I love to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think that to be creative or to be successful in any business, you have to be willing to learn and to admit you don't know things. But so the crew would come out and I'd be like, oh, that's cool. What are those lights? Why are you putting in there? What kind of mic? So if I were to do a YouTube channel, um, what kind of camera would I use? And I, just getting that, that yeah. wisdom, don't be afraid to, not being afraid to ask because most people love to share what they love. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of how that started. And then here's my, here's what you need about me. I am not good at holding myself accountable. I don't, it's part of ADD, so I don't have internal accountability, but I will put people around me that will hold me externally accountable. It's that people pleasing yeah. thing. And so I knew I wasn't putting out videos regularly enough. So I said, oh, you know what? I'm going to do, um, I'll do like a series, like a video. I'll call it the, how many keywords can I fit in a title? <laughs> the free motion challenge quilting along. Perfect. <laughs> and so I put that out and didn't even tell my staff. I just, cause I didn't know. I'm like, I'll, st I'll start this in two weeks. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's, that's been, it kind of built up and I'm not near as, um, regular as I want to be, mm -hmm. but 
I don't, I try not to beat, beat myself up about stuff. I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. And there's no such thing about as balance. I know you with young children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. uh, my kids used to be little. Now they just hate me. So it's fine. <laughs> um, but like, there's no such thing as balance. Every day is different. So you can't beat yourself up for what you're not doing. Exactly. Especially when you are doing so many things mm -hmm. at once, mm -hmm. which brings me into a really good question of, you know, you do fabric design, you do free motion quilting, you have got a YouTube, you've got all of these responsibilities, you're also a person outside of all of this. How do you balance that in your day-to-day -day life? What does that look like for you? Well, it just all falls into place. I, I feel like everything goes perfect. Oh, no, that's <laughs> a joke, obviously. Well, first of all, the way that all comes about is I have a very addictive personality, and I have I love a new project. I love a new project. There's nothing I love more than starting something new. Well, the problem is all the other stuff I've started has to keep going. Um, so I always think, well, and then what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this challenge, and then what? Like, I can't get enough fabric to make the panels. So we're going to buy a fabric printer, right? Um, but I do have to say I have a great support system. Mm -hmm. I have a, a great staff. My husband works the business with me. My sister-in-law is our director of operations. I mean, she's the one that made sure the room was clean when you came in. She's the one that makes sure the lights get turned <laughs> wow. on so that I can create. So I think that's what's important. And everything kind of works together. So in any one given day, I'm doing something different. And I love that. Mm -hmm. I love it. It feeds me because I, I get very easily bored. Yeah. Um, and so... It, it seems sometimes it's a little out of control, but I genuinely love what I'm doing and it all kind of feeds each other. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I can't, I think I forgot the original question, but that's the, my answer. <laughs> <laughs> so what is running a quilt store like? Was that something that you thought about early on or, I mean, how did that even happen? And what does it feel like to be like a boss woman? Like boss you woman? are just boss, boss woman. <laughs> so what's funny is um, everything is kind of, I don't know, the, the saying, even a blind squirrel gets a nut sometimes. So I have these ideas, and I don't know if they're going to work out. And I have been quilting from home for like 10, 12 years. And my youngest had just went off to kindergarten. I'm tired of, like, being tortured by my laundry when I want to be quilting. So I thought, <laughs> you know what? I finally talked to my husband. Can we move the business outside? Like, can, can we buy somewhere, rent somewhere? I, I mean, I wanted, like, a tin building, an outbuilding on the back property. I don't care. I just wanted some separation. Yeah. And so... Jeremy never does anything halfway, so he found this building that was for sale by owner, and I'm like, oh, crap, it's on the freaking square. We're going to have to do a quilt shop now. Like, you have to have. Exactly. So my main idea, this is so funny, my main idea is, so you've been in there, that main yep. part, I was like, I'll put my machine there, and then we'll have a little retail-ish component up front, and even if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter, because it's just my studio. Mm -hmm. It's just where I want to quilt. So we, my business had already, between authoring, writing books and doing all that, like it had already developed enough to support it. And then we're like, well, I might as well sell long arms because I already travel and sell long arms for handy culture anyway. And so it's like kind of builds up. Well, this took off. It's doing great. And now my machine is still at my house. <laughs> I've never, like I have the, the shop. I have this event space where my office is and I still quilt from home. Well, <laughs> but it's, it's fine. So um, it's really fun owning a shop. I don't handle much of the day to day anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, I like starting new projects and then letting other people handle it. So Jessica kind of manages, keeps an eye on that. It's really fun picking out fabric. Um, it's it's a whole nother scary thing. Retail has never been in my blood. Like mm -hmm. when I met my husband, he owned some Subway restaurants. So we've always been in fast food. Mm -hmm. Always been like self-employed. But yeah. um, so retail is a totally different can of worms. So I have learned a lot yeah. just about, you know, anything. But I think that's, again, I, I you have to learn. You have to embrace that and just be like, okay. We'll figure it out. I mean, people would come in the shop the first time, and I would be like, I know you have more fabric in your stash than we have in our shop, but I'm adding slowly because I don't know what yeah. <clears throat> what the area is going to support and blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, okay, I, I'm sorry. I'd apologize if people come in. It will look like a quilt shop soon. <laughs> and what about after a year or two, I was like, I feel like we're a legit quilt shop. I could stop apologizing to people as they come in. <laughs> and isn't that the, like quite an accomplishment to think, I have my own store in my hometown. Like, this is your hometown this is where you're from so I think that's it's super fun uh, but I, to answer the second part of your question how's it feel to be the boss lady <laughs> I am the most hands-off boss if you could imagine the complete opposite of a micromanager <laughs> it's almost worse so my employees would be like well what should I do I'm like I don't care whatever whatever <laughs> whatever and so uh, Jessica coming in really helps and so I I, I think I'm a great number two <laughs> <laughs> I love to design I love to create I love to be around people I don't want to be the heavy. Yeah. I don't want to be the one that has to write you up. You know, so so Jessica and Jerry, we handle that, and I get to just be the, the fun mom. Oh, <laughs> so. wow. That's special. It's special. So have... it's, it's immature, but special. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's good, though, that you have such a good support system. I do. Because, Absolutely. Um, I mean, you say that you have problems with 
um, you know, people pleasing or ADD, but I, anyone would struggle with all of the things that you are responsible for. So Mm -hmm. the fact that you're able to handle it all and do it well. I mean, there's also wine drinking and there's crying. I mean, if Jeremy (laughs) were to watch this, he might be watching it. He'd be like, shoot, about once every other month, I'm good for like a crying fit in bed. Like, what if I did I do this challenge in the July? Like, I'm so busy. And like, there's that frustration. But at the end of the day, like even a bad day at the quilt shop is not a bad day. I think about people that have really tough jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, first responders, Jessica's husband's a police officer. I mean, a bad day as a police officer is a bad day. And so I think just keeping everything in perspective, you're like, okay. There's really no such thing as long as nobody's hurt. I mean, it's a good day. And so sometimes that makes me feel guilty, especially when bad things are happening, like COVID or yeah. things. And I'm just like, I'm going to go quilt for a living, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But I think just keeping it in perspective really helps kind of even that out. But like I said, I'm a fast sinker. So once I start <laughs> going down, it's like, Phew. so. Yeah. Um, with the long arming, because you say that you travel and you teach and obviously writing books and stuff, mm-hmm. do you have any background did you get like a degree in teaching? How did that come about for you? Um, so I have a degree in fast food with a minor in French fries. No, I, I went to community college. I don't want to brag, but it took me three years to get my two-year degree, right? Uh, no, I don't, I don't have any formal training, but like I'm a lifelong learner. So I have listened to enough audiobooks on business that I basically have a degree. Now, um, I think that's the common misconception. That's also very difficult might I say, is my my children are 19, 17, and 13. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at my 19-year-old who is going into food management. I'm like, you really should go to college. (laughs) And he's like, "Uh, you and dad didn't. I'm like, I know, I know. (laughs) But um, so I think like that there was no... There was no training for that. But where do you get training to run a, a quilt shop? Where do you get training to write a quilting book? Exactly. You know, so I think the thing is you just figure it out. You you, you don't be afraid to make mistakes. I, gosh, I wish – that's one thing I can get my kids to figure out. Two of my kids are fine. One of my kids <laughs> always afraid of making mistakes. But um, you can't be afraid to try it out. If it doesn't work, well, then you just learn how not to do it the next time. Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a really good lesson. I didn't go to college. I went for like two years, community mm-hmm. college as well. Hey. And it took me hey. two years to not get a degree. <laughs> so you did a good job. Um, but yeah, that's very special. I'm hoping my kids kind of are like, okay, either trade school or college. Yeah. We or... don't condone not going to college, <laughs> yeah. but we're just saying it can work out. Exactly. Right? Like I met Jeremy. He had the subway. I was the manager of the Burger King next to his subway, which is how we met. <laughs> oh, it's so special. Yeah. And so he ha- he married me because I had fast food experience, right? So it's like, well, there's no reason to go on to college. I'm going to be working at fast food. But I think there's so much information out there. Oh, yeah. So much. And, I mean, I'm listening to, I'm such a nerd, biographies. Like, Mark Cuban is my quilting dream crush. I'd love to meet him. If I could have lunch with him. If he would sit down with me, I would be like, okay. All right, so tell me, like, you know, I just, I love that because I think there really is nothing to prepare you exactly for what you're going through. Yeah. Like, even if you go to school for business, yep. my young, my middle, she wants to go to school for business. I'm like, that's great. Or, I mean, I'm just saying, let me just throw this out there. Like, you could come intern under me because, you know, yeah. but, you know, it, 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 I'm not saying you shouldn't go to college. I'm rambling now. But <laughs> the idea Fine. is whether you've gone to college or not, whether you feel like you don't know something, there is information out to figure it out and you you can. I, well, I mean, besides like rocket science and brain surgery, I'm obviously talking about, you know, the creative stuff. Yeah. Um, so let's do, well, I guess you were talking about your kiddos. Are you hoping that they follow your footsteps in some way? Are they interested in quilting at all? Are they sewing? Have you tried? And they're just like, nah, we've they, had enough they, of it. They all, they all have enjoyed playing on the long arm when they were younger. And then my middle daughter and I wrote a book. I wrote the book and she yeah. posted her pictures. <laughs> she, she benefited from that. Um, and my youngest has sewn. Right now they're, they're solidly in their teens and they're more into, you know, Instagram, yeah. social media. Um, I, I think even if they don't come back to it, I just want them to see that things are created. They mm-hmm. don't just show up. Like they don't just show up in Target. Exactly. Somebody has to make those. It's mm-hmm. created. And I think once you realize that things – are made, you can figure out how to make it. So whether they find some kind of creative thing, I, I just want them to find some passion mm-hmm. for something and create. Because I, I, if I ever had to do a TED Talk, which is my big dream, it would be on how everybody needs a creative outlet. Yeah. And, and so that's what I would want for them. But no, I'm like, please, could somebody at least figure out how to edit videos? I'll pay you. <laughs> I, I would pay them. Way overpay them to just edit it. And they're like, no. I'm like, yeah. So my son works at Sonic. He's a manager. My nice. daughter works at McDonald's. She's worked there for three years. So she was 14. Wow. So we've got the fast food market it's corner for sure. In, yeah. I'm just like, hey, how about this? How what about, about a Taco Bell? Bell? What about some? Come get some 
fabric for me or something. Or, yeah, or work at Burger King. Get me some Whoppers, right? Like, gosh. But yeah, you know how it is. We always rebel against our parents. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know about that a little bit. <laughs> so um, for our last portion of the question, or my last one I want to leave with you is, um, what do you want to leave as your legacy in the quilting world? And this sounds kind of morbid, but like when you're yes, gone, yes. Um, what you're building right now, what is the one thing, what is the one takeaway that you want people to have? Mm, that's a good one. Never been asked that one. Nothing even close. That's very good. If I gave out gold stars, you'd <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So on a side note, I have a weird su superstition that I hate to leave my long arm empty. As okay. soon as the quilt is done, I 90% of the time load something else. For two reasons. One, so I can go quilt on it anytime I want to. And two, nothing bad can happen to me if I have a quilt in progress, right? <laughs> it's very silly. That's very morbid. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, you think about, especially for a business, I told Jeremy not too long ago, I'm like, one day it's going to be done. And for we don't know for what reason, right? Maybe I get tired of it. Yeah. I won't. I'll work <laughs> until I'm 100. Um, or maybe maybe I'll become irrelevant, right? Like, you always have to remember that, like, I, I, well, I would like to think I'm not, but <laughs> it is a possibility, yeah. right? Like things could happen. Um, so I guess it would extend beyond, beyond quilting itself. It, it would be like, I wish people felt confidence in themselves. Like I feel confidence in them mm -hmm. and not saying that I am a self confident, like <laughs> I always feel great, but I think it's, it's great to cheer other people on. Mm -hmm. It's great to help other people get to that finish line. Like, if you ever watch the Olympics and somebody wins the gold medal and they're up there crying, the coach is on the sideline crying too, right? Yeah. They got, they helped them get there. And so I think that would be it, that I could help people feel the confidence to try things, even if they're not good at it, mm -hmm. even if they don't end up liking it, just to experiment with those different things. Well, I would say you have achieved that so far oh, um, because I watched your videos when I first started out. And my first quilt, I pieced it with my mother-in-law. She's behind the camera over here. But she helped me out. She did all the cutting. She, like, helped me with the sashing. She told me how to pre-wash and iron. Um, and then I was like, okay, I've got it. I've got it. I've been watching Angela over on YouTube. I'm part of her academy over here. And so I free motion quilted, like, the first five quilts that I ever made. And I was just fearless because you taught it so well mm -hmm. and you made it seem like Aww. approachable like mm -hmm. hey anybody can do this mm -hmm. and it, you don't have to have a long arm you can do it on just like a simple mm -hmm. brother and so that's what I did and so I that's would say awesome. that you I'm not the only one that's been watching your videos and learning well, so there's so many I people love out that. there that's so that. sweet but I'm proud of you for doing it because like <laughs> I tell people you can read as many diet books as you want <laughs> I yeah. could read, I could get all the new diet books, all the new diet stuff, but if I don't do the things, yeah. I'm not going to lose Well, things. if you're working at a Burger King, it might be a little hard. <laughs> Come on, I do love the Whoppers, right? <laughs> but it, it's, it's like, you know, you have to, you, there's that information gathering stage. Mm -hmm. I get it, but there's also that point where you got to take Act that step, it. and that's a big step. Uh, that's a jumping off the diving board kind of thing, but I'm down in the water being like, hey, it feels really good. <laughs> you're you're going to be like that kid that jumps off and be like, why did I wait? Um, but I have taught enough that I know there's different cultures. You might have a more fearless personality. You might not be a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. um, there's people that are so scared to move, and that's fine, and that's okay. But I want to, you can get over that if you want to. It's so funny. My very first class is people are like, you're such a great teacher. And I'm like, all I did was, you're doing great. You're doing fine. <laughs> like, there's nothing to improve there. Like, thank you. I was like, oh, I could do this. <laughs> but also the more you teach, the more, the more I know I, the things that people have said that have helped them, yeah. the things that have clicked, the, the things to say. And I feel like through my experience teaching, I can do like psychoanalysis on quilters. <laughs> not completely. That's deep. Man. But I could be like, oh, not you specifically, but like you're a perfectionist. Do you give yourself a hard time in other areas of their life? And I love it when the friends are with them because they're like, yeah, the friends will always rat you out, the friends and family. So I think that is, I, I'm glad that you did it, but you ultimately, I can cheer you on, but you have to take that step. And yeah. I try to make the barrier to entry so low. That's why I don't charge anything for the videos. That's why you don't have to buy the custom panel to do the yeah. challenge. You have really no excuse. You need a quilt sandwich and a free motion foot. And if, you know, before it's like, well, I've got to pay a hundred dollars. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just yeah. saying like, I don't want to make it easy for you to say no. Yeah. And back out before you even realize right. that maybe I actually like this, mm -hmm. letting mm -hmm. go and having fun. Yeah. I think a, a lot of that, too, is some quilters are trained a certain way, and it's hard to, like, break that freedom, mm -hmm. free motion. I mean, mm -hmm. it is very freeing. Um, so let's get into some fun questions. Okay. Some of these will be quilting-related. Some of them will not. All right. Um, my friend Heather, she's probably in the chat. I can't see because my laptop turned uh, my screen off. But um, she has been wanting to ask questions, and we've done this on almost all of the Meet the Makers okay. so far. So when you have a flying geese block, mm -hmm. just a singular block, do you call it a flying goose, 
or flying geese when you have a lot of them? Is it a gaggle or? I think it's always geese. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> I've actually looked this up. So we do build a quilt, our block of the month. And Joni, who is like the retired home ec teacher, the, the alternate to me, like she is all about the piecing and the directional prints and all that. Yeah. Um, it, I think she said, she looked up, I can't remember now, but like the two corners are like the something, something, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but I would say we call it a flying geese because they're like ants. There's never just one. True. Very true. If you see one, you know there's more coming. <laughs> You've got some friends over there. Um, when preparing your quilts for domestic quilting, do you prefer pen basting or spray basting? I prefer fusible batting. Ooh. So neither. How about Tricky. That? I know, right? Like, who? Yeah. Uh, so ultimately, you got to get those layers together. It doesn't matter how you do it. Yeah. I don't like pins because they're like speed bumps. <laughs> I like to go fast. And I, I'm like, oh, crap. But yeah. for newer quilters, it's actually good because it forces you to stop, reposition your hand, and move on. Yeah. Um, I don't have a good area to spray base. I, it leaves residue. I don't, I don't, if I had a good work area, I could yeah. do that, but I don't. So I use fusible batting. And the next question is what kind or how to, it's <laughs> one-sided fusible, and I put the fusible on the batting side. Oh, nice. And so then I layer it and just iron it together. But fun fact, when I'm working on the challenge, I don't, I just throw the layers together. Really? I don't even fuse it or nothing. Really? And it, I mean, sometimes there's ruching on the back, but... <laughs> Um, it, it'll quilt out. Ultimately, and this is getting a little details, it's when you're twisting the quilt that you get those tucks. So mm -hmm. if you're always keeping your hands where your fingers in the same position, yeah. instead of doing this, you'll have less <laughs> chance of head tucks. But, uh, scrappy quilts or non-scrappy quilts? Ooh. I'm going to say non-scrappy quilts. Wow. <laughs> because, because I like quilting. I don't mind quilting scrappy quilts. Mm. I've quilted a lot of quilts. Um, but usually the non-scrappy quilts have better color replacement. And I don't really, I mean, I don't really have a fabric stash like most people do. My yeah. thread strap, that's my thread <laughs> stash. It's like, these are all my used threads from my very first long arm. Look at that, you know, oh, I, don't, wow. I don't use them, yeah. but I can't throw them away. But um, so I, I, that would be the short answer, I guess. How many quilts would you, if you could estimate and just put a number out there, because you're saying you've, you've quilted a lot, and I, I truly believe, I how would, many quilts? I would, gosh. I would say over a thousand oh if I gosh. had to. I mean, especially when I started quilting for the industry. So I quilted for customers. And then as I started teaching, then I could quilt. I mean, I'd been quilting for Tula, but as I quilted for other books and stuff, I yeah. mean, there was one market that I had 50 quilts there that I quilted. Wow. And so I'm never good at keeping track of that yeah. stuff. So it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> um, let's see. Liberty is your hometown. This is where your shop's at. Um, and where you're from, where do you recommend people go to eat or for entertainment when they come and visit your fabric store? So what's really cool about the quilt shop is we're in historical downtown Liberty. You saw it. Yep. Um, and so like, even though it's a big suburb of Kansas city, we have a target, we have all this stuff <laughs> that's important. Um, but we're at very, it's a historical, cute, quaint little downtown. And so I love the shops that are around me because people that come visit, can bring their non-quilters and send them over to the brewery to get a beer <laughs> while I can take their money. I mean, where they can do some shopping, right? So it's, it's kind of like, that's really nice. And so usually I try to position or point them to somewhere on the square. Um, I, it's amazing that I'm not bigger and broker than I am because <laughs> there's some great restaurants. So there's like Catch-22, which has like fried chicken sa mm. salad. So yummy. That's where you got your drink. We're going to go eat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The fried chicken salad is Yeah, stuck. that was so good. They don't, and the, you know, the little pouch drink yep. is so good. I had a sangria after quilt walk. I was like, I'm going to. Anyway, um, but there's also like Italian restaurant that's really fun. But there's like some cute little museums, like Clay County Historical Museum, which is really fun. And so there's a lot to do right around here. For those that are like more sports nuts, you know, you can go to Kansas City and watch a Royals game or yeah. watch the Chiefs or whatever, but there's there's plenty to do around here for sure. And I thought it was pretty cool of you um, to showcase all of those shops because we were coming for you and um, we knew that we'd be walking around, but I don't think if we came here, we would ever go into the other shops. Nothing personal yeah. about them, but yeah. it was really cool that you highlighted the businesses around you. Absolutely. I thought that was really cool. Well, but they provide for, we, it's a copacetic relationship, right? I mean, yeah. they provide a charming backdrop. They provide... Um, restaurants and stuff. Jenny Joan, I would say we're friends. Like I, I love her. I love her place. She was telling me, she's like, we, we have a hard time keeping a restaurant in Hamilton. Yeah. Well, that's because it's just a small town. Like they have to provide everything that they want you to have. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's a lot of work. I got the, I got the cool shot. Do you want wine? Do you want to go to the wine bar? Or do you want to go to the brewery? I don't know. Whichever one. They're both within walking distance. Um, and so they, they provide that for me. And I didn't even living here when I opened the shop, I was like, there's some really cute shops around here. Even when I was handing out stuff for the quilt walk, I was like, I haven't been in here in a while. This, this is really cute. I'm going to have to come back. And so it, it's kind of a fun way to introduce quilters to that. Yeah. Um, 
it, it helps us all out. And and plus, I get major brownie points with the other <laughs> shop owners, so it's yes. good. <laughs> those were some really fun ones. That museum was really Wasn't that cool. cool? Yes. It's so, so, for those of you who don't know, it used to be a doctor's office with a pharmacy downstairs. So, like, you walk through, and it's, it's fun. It's really fun. But there's also, like, the Jesse James Bank Museum, because Jesse wow. James was born around here. So, mm-hmm. everybody loves that, which I think is kind of interesting, because, you know, he was a... A murderer outlaw. and an outlaw, but whatever. So, like, you can go see places he robbed. So, it, it, it's Fun very unusual. Very unusual. So, do you have any hobbies or crafts outside of quilting? I do. I do. Because what happens is when your hobby becomes your job, then you do need another outlet. Yep. I need something, you know. And so, mine right now is gardening. I love. Oh, nice. I love plants. I'll show you my office where I have all my plants. Oh, that was gosh. my COVID thing. Um, <laughs> my sister-in-law Jessica were both into plants. I was just telling her, I'm like, do your fiddle leaf fig is still alive? That's cool. <laughs> Um, so that's my, my hobby now. And then sometimes I'll crochet. I love to dabble. I'm, I'm a dabbler. I, I think when you feel burnt out, when, you're, when your job is yeah. creative, it's easy to get burnt out. And you have to fill that creative cup with, with things. Yeah, I'm Whether learning something. Learning yeah. something or spending time on your own project. Yeah. Whatever, whatever way you get um, positioned. But it's funny because I'll say to my husband, I'll be like, oh, my gosh, such such. He's like, we don't need another hobby. So like I, I kind of picked up <laughs> photography there for a minute. I'm like, I could do this for a business. He's like, hold on a second. You already got one business. I'm like, okay, fine. So there are things like, that, or there's also things I would love to try, but I don't. Like, I would love to try woodworking. Oh, yeah. But my husband's like, no, we don't need you cutting off your hands while you're so. <laughs> we need those for the long so I'm just like, okay, fine. So there are things I don't, like, you know, hoverboards or yeah. those scooters. I'm like, I probably shouldn't break an arm. <laughs> probably not. So maybe after I retire, that's when I'll do it. But, yeah, I think that's it, the creative hobbies are fun, and I, I love I love learning. Yeah. That kind of stuff, so. Um, so my husband, these are from him. These are the last two. Um, the first one is very, very important. Okay. Okay. Dogs versus cats. Both. Okay. Okay. We can take that. Okay. So here's, I'll have to pause and say like, we have two dogs. We have actually, we're like hobby farmers. (laughs) So we have alpaca and goats and chickens. We used to have horses. We don't have them anymore. We have baby goats. Anybody want to buy a baby goat? We have some for sale. (laughs) Anyway. So we have some great Pyrenees dogs, but wow, those are one thing that Jeremy, and I are like, we don't want any indoor animals. So like my kids are so, you know, they're struggling with that. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, baby girl. you got goats and alpaca, <laughs> but you don't get an indoor dog. So it, if I could pick, I probably would get both. But wow. um, I had cats and dogs both growing up and I, I love them both. Great. Pine. They're huge. They're, they're huge. fluff balls too. Fluff balls. Yes. Oh. And it's so hot and they, they get in the dirt and they roll around. You're like, oh, they're just, they're pretty. They're pretty funny. <laughs> they're beautiful too. Um, okay. So this is the last one. Austin wants to know. Okay. You're invited to a potluck. Okay. What is your signature dish? What are you bringing to the party? Caramel apple cheesecake. Ooh. And she was on it that's, too. That's, I don't, I don't bake. And I don't cook a whole lot. Yeah. Although I did make chicken fajitas last night. I'm, I'm good for about one meal every other week, <laughs> which I'm, I feel bad because my older two had a different life experience growing up. <laughs> I cook dinner every time for them. Well, now they're working, and I'm like, Haley, who's 13, do you need me to make you some Easy Mac? Have you ate? Okay, good. Perfect. Um, no, so I can make a – that's usually what's requested at family gatherings yeah. on my husband's side, the caramel apple cheesecake. That Something that's a little bit more specific is broccoli casserole, which sounds healthy. It's, like, it's not. It's like cheese Whiz. and So that's a family recipe, so I'll bring that. But that, if I was going to a regular – like I wouldn't bring that but oh, that yeah. sounds delicious now I'm hungry we oh. have to go to the local restaurants mm-hmm. again because we mm-hmm. ate at that place that you were talking about we had those pina coladas mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. really yummy maybe we'll have to try the barbecue place too the barbecue believe... place is Jeremy's favorite it is real good when we asked him he's like you have to go to the barbecue place yeah. <laughs> unfortunately you're not here on a Friday they have burnt ends on Friday but um, their their brisket sandwich is great that sounds and I don't delicious. drink beer I'm a wine drinker but yeah. a lot of people love their beer but Luigi's which is right next to Catch-22, <laughs> has like, I'm sure it's a little grandma on the back. They have a great lunch special, and their wine's yummy, too. So. What wine is in your cup and Midnight Quilter? Like, what, nine times out of ten, what are you drinking? Juice. <laughs> juice? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not really filming at midnight. <laughs> I'm filming, and so it's like, it's usually juice or monster. So I, <laughs> I joke, there is a caffeine to Cabernet cycle to the day, right? Right now I'm in the caffeine side. And then when I get home, then I go right into the Cabernet. So, but usually that's, that's usually the most let down for people. Cause it's like, Oh, I'm like, listen, it takes a long time to fill in those. If I was actually drinking, yeah. it would be like drunk history. I'd be like, so oh, here's what we're going to do. Your wavy lines would be yeah. really wavy. Yeah. Uh, when we first did the midnight quilt show back early on, I would have a glass of wine at the very last shot of the yeah. day, but it makes me tired. That's my home thing. Even yeah. when I travel, it's funny because people are like, Oh, you can drink wine tonight in the hotel. I'm like, nah, I'll probably just go to bed. It's weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm such a creature of habit. I'm like, yeah. 
I'll take my wine home and I'll drink it at home. So, but yeah, that's, it's usually juice or sparkling water. That's why they're like, drink more. I'm like, but it's not, it's, it's grape juice. I'm tired of drinking grape juice. I'm like, I've never been so regular in my life. <laughs> that's so hilarious. I never would have known either. Yeah, Cause yeah. It, I mean, it looks like it in the cup. So it's, it's disappointing when some people find out, but I always can always say like, when people are like, I would show my kids, but you know, the wine, I'm like, tell them it's not wine. It's just quilting. So towards the end, like it's quilting juice or it's a piecing potion, yeah. you know, kind of whatever. But, um, yeah, no, that's sorry. awesome. Well, now we know. But I do drink wine every night, so bless you think I am a, a you know, false. This is not what I'm doing. Is it better than grape juice? It's way better. <laughs> it's like, it's about the routine of it, right? Like, especially when the kids are younger, like, they go to bed, I pour my wine, I sit on the couch, usually talk to Jeremy or whatever, and then I'm like, they come down, I'm like, Mommy's got her wine! <laughs> but no, I, I do love it. That's awesome. Well, I think we are going to go through the chat. Sure. I'm sure there's several questions. We've got about 57 people watching right nice. now. I see so Becca and Tiffany, um, Heather. So let's go through here and see if there are any questions that we can highlight and, and answer for you guys. Um, Teresa's in here. Hello, everybody. My laptop screen was uh, shaded, so I couldn't see see it's so fun to be able to have that virtual chat interactivity I think that's when I've been doing my live chats every week it's really fun to get to just connect I mean that's the one thing I think the videos were missing because you, you could comment but so I love I love the, the live feature it's really cool be, and, mm -hmm. and even the people in the chat talk with each other uh -huh. so yeah. it's like yeah it's so fun it's awesome um so we've got a question from Crystal what is the first design you tell beginners to use on a long arm when learning how to use it it depends <laughs> no, that's usually the answer I give. Quilting designs are like learning your letters. Some kids find some letters harder than others, mm -hmm. and everybody is different. <sighs> that's such a fun part. You're like, great, everybody, we could all just be the same. It would be easier to teach. So usually I say some kind of meandering line. So usually I would say like a meander. However, I struggled with the meander. Really? It's, it's not necessarily easier. It's just yeah. easier to teach because there's not a lot to it, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, quilt a wiggly line that looks like the Missouri River. There we go, guys. You're done. But uh, so something that just forces you, I, don't, I, don't take, I would like to retract my answer. That's not better. Usually their name. Anybody oh, wow. can come in and after a second or two, a minute or two, they can quilt their name. Interesting. Because, yeah, because they know the path. And yeah. so if, if I were to meet somebody and they're like, ah, oh, what design? I would say, do you doodle anything in real life? Do you always doodle leaves? Yeah. Do you doodle little hearts? Whatever you do, already know the shape of the path. That's the best thing to start with. Yeah. So if somebody's like, oh, I always draw little swirls. I didn't realize that's what they were, but I just do them. Like, perfect. That's what you start with. <laughs> it's muscle memory. That's really it, what it is. Eighty percent of quilting is just knowing where you're going. Yeah. I mean, I completely made and that's that up. Hard too. But don't you think it's true? Yes. Like, I think it, it's true. Especially with free motion quilting, with straight line quilting, stitching the ditch. You don't have to think of it. But that was the hardest thing for me to latch on to when I started. I'm like. You get started, and you're like, oh, my God, I got stuck in this corner. I don't know how to get out of it. I have to break my thread and try again. But that is the hardest part, I feel like. But think about, like, quilting. You're learning how to drive a car and navigate a new city at the same time. So you're, you're trying to learn how to create this design and free motion quilt at the same time. Yeah. That's not fun. Your brain's like, do, 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 yeah. do, do. So <laughs> if you already have the path or a line or something you've marked out yeah. to quilt along, so you can get – used to how it handles and then you can start building off the designs but again you have to give yourself grace <laughs> yes. and just know it's gonna be fine um laura asks you do you use different threads different weights colors or types of thread on the top and bottom yes <laughs> so what's cool about quilting is you can use different types different colors different weights different whatever on the top and bottom now you have to make tension adjustments due to that so usually i tell quilters you didn't ask this question but i'll answer it uh, just in case uh, 40 to 50 weight is a good range to stay in mm -hmm. for newer quilters because it's strong enough to handle the machine quilting, uh, but it's still thin enough to blend in. Yeah. And so it, it's like sweet spot. But once, once you get comfortable with the design and quilting, then you can experiment. So right now what's in my machine is I have a 40 weight thread on top glide, which is my new, my favorite. I love that sheen. <laughs> and then I use pre-wounds, which are a 60 weight in my bobbin. So it's finer because oh more thread will fit on the bobbin. And can I ask, you all a question. Why can we put a man on the moon, but we can't put a spool of thread in our machine and oh under the bobbin gosh. area? Like, yeah. I don't think that's cool. Anyway, that's Very it. Very true. <laughs> Do you use the pre-wounds for any specific reason? Does that help with tension? Um, no, it's just because or... I'm lazy. <laughs> yeah. So I used to be like, I wind all my bobbins and I want the thread color to match. But then bobbins are like drugs. Like if somebody offers you one, just say no. Because then you know you'll have all the pre-wounds. But I use them on my sewing machine and my long arm. Oh, that's hilarious. Makes it easy. 
Uh, let's see, we've got another one. If you start a quilt design and change your mind, how do you balance the quilting on the top? Do you repeat the one you didn't like two or three more times? <laughs> yep, once is a mistake, twice is a design choice. <laughs> so if I make it wrong one spot, I'll change, but I'll just do it somewhere else. Yeah. And that's for me. Ultimately, like, here's the deal. There's no quilting police out there. Mm -hmm. The quilting police are in your head. Well, I mean, so I what? I, I've never had anybody <laughs> say anything. But most often, people are more worried about what other people think, exactly. not necessarily what they're saying. So I'm just making these jokes like, if you need to justify it to yourself, you don't have to do anything. You can just quilt it once and be good. But for customers, I would be like, oh, I love the juxtaposition of having the two different blocks in the corners. It just highlights the difference and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I my rule of thumb or my tip, my thing is I... Do it a couple more times and then just switch to a different design. Um, that's, that's interesting. I don't know if I would be able to do that. I feel like if it would mess up, I would just go get the seam ripper. I'd be like, okay, we're starting over. <laughs> but that's my that's my problem because I can't think past the failure, you know, and yeah. keep going. Um, I think the thing is you do what you need to do. Yeah. You do what you will do. I, I'm surrounded by perfectionists. My husband's one of them. It's great. I mean, you want a perfectionist setting up your long arm. Let's just be honest. <laughs> but, like, he, he's been like, I can't can't move past that and you're like okay fine then work yeah. it out if that's what you want to do exactly for me just keep going <laughs> I've made so many mistakes in my life like I think that's part of it you know like I've lost you know you're like you just get really good at really oh okay it's just another day another yeah. mistake um but and I think being able to justify what you're doing or moving on so I there's nothing wrong with ripping out quilting yeah however you nobody rips out quilting and is a better quilter for it true very so, true usually I tell people if you're gonna sorry I know if you're gonna rip it out wait till you get to the end <laughs> Yeah. Come back and look at it, and if you still don't like it, then rip it out. Well, and that's also a thing. Like, we agonize over all these little details, but then, you know, I make a quilt, and I show it to my mother-in-law or my husband. And they're like, that looks great. But you're like, wait, did you see that little section and this little section? They're like, no, it all together is good. And so it's hard sometimes to let go of that. And be it's like, fine. It's totally normal. And it's funny because I tell people, don't put out your mistakes. But if I'm sending video footage over to somebody that I know that edits video, but like, okay, don't judge. Like, I just, <laughs> I don't, you, know. you just want to make sure you're like, I get it. But, but you know, I think... Part of that's also just, you know, accepting. I, I got a, some great advice before, and it was like, when somebody compliments you, accept it. Mm -hmm. Because when you dismiss it, you're not accepting that gift. Yeah. And that's what's really kind of hurtful if you think yeah. about it. Like, if, if I say, like, wow, you look really nice today, you can be like, oh, well, you. I don't feel like I look nice, but I really appreciate <laughs> you saying that, right? Yeah. Like, I think I think that really helped me. And so even when I'm somewhere, oh, I mean, and they're like, I love you, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm like, thank you, I appreciate that. I mean, even that, that's real to them, so you have to accept that compliment. And that kind of goes into the next question that Brenda asked. She asked, asking if the locals treat you like a superstar that we all think you are. How do they react to you when they see you out and about in the town square? What's well, the saying? Everybody's a prophet except in their own hometown. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it, the thing is, so many uh, different variations. Has anybody ever noticed you out? No. I, I, outside of a quilting industry, like, yeah. hey, I'm out of context now. One time, I've been, actually, I've been noticed twice in public. And once was in Mount Denali, Alaska. Wow. And the second time was at Ikea, <laughs> and I had two of my kids with me, and they were like, this is so embarrassing. Oh I'm my like, God. what? Just because I get recognized in Ikea, and I have a oh, mask me? on, and I still get recognized. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? No. Um, sometimes it's funny, because they'll, like, the different, like, shop owners will be like, oh, um, I guess, I guess that, that's a big deal, whatever. But I think <laughs> if you have to tell somebody you're important, yeah. it doesn't count. And so, no, I, I kind of skid through the radar, like, so I, I, uh. I still get asked what's for dinner. I still don't make dinner. But yeah. I no. That made me think of when we were at the quilt walk, we were waiting in line to go get our fabric signed by Tula. And we're sitting there and this dude's just sitting um, right outside that restaurant in a chair, just drinking beer. And he's like, uh, we're like, what are you doing? Are you holding a spot for your wife? He's like, no, I just sit here and drink beer. And, and we're like, well, do you know what's going on? Cause he's like, there's a lot of women, Like, there's a lot of people lined up here. Like what the heck's going on? I'm like, yeah, they're here to see you. But uh, I was like, yeah, there's like a famous quilter and a fabric designer like right here. And he's like, oh, <laughs> but yeah, he was like totally like, why are there so many people here? And they're all like sweating and they don't mind. It was so that hilarious. Quilter. I mean, really that's an oxymoron. If you I'm like, they're. You're only famous if, if there's paparazzi following you to the grocery store. That's not happening. So it's not Very, oh, my gosh. I I'm I find that hard to believe, though. I feel like no, two just, times, two just, times total. Yeah. Outside oh of gosh. a quilting event. Like, it's one thing, like, if I'm outside the hotel yeah. or whatever. But, no, it's – it's uh, That's insane to me. Wow. Um, Heather says, have you taken your staff axe throwing again? That looked fun. No, I haven't, but that was fun. I did take my family for Jeremy's birthday oh, that next fun. September to do that because I was like, this is fun, guys. <laughs> This is so fun. No, um, I, 
we don't get out and do as much stuff as we want to, but we went and got shady massages one time. What is that? Shady? That sounds very shady. <laughs> it's like a place that does rubs and you're all like the main room, but it's dark. Oh, and you yeah. lay down and massage you, but like you can hear people like grunting and stuff. Like, oh, it's like a shady no. massage, but it feels great. So it's, it's more of an experience. I'm like, come on, we're going to all go get this weird Great massage. family experience. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, she also asked, how are the goats? They are so good. You know what I love about goats? or animals in general. You just can't be mad when you're around them. So when I need a little, my, my kids take care of them. So I, I can't sit here and be like, well, I take care of my goats. But when I need a little thing, <laughs> I have to go down. Those little, especially the babies are so cute. And they yeah. just love, they're like dogs, but without like the maintenance. They, Do you ever put pajamas on them? Um, no, but I did, they did put pants on some of the chickens, which is <laughs> hilarious. But we did have a goat, Limpy, who, who she had an infection in her leg when she was a baby and she couldn't walk. And so I made a little sling Aww. and I carried her around. And I was like, oh. You should so, have taken, did you take her in the shop? Just like we go have, to work we with have, her? Not to the shop, but we have brought them here to the building for like That's our lawn so armor cool. tree and like for our owners and, and let them play around because they're just so cute. And that is And fun. when they poop places, it's just like little bitty poops. <laughs> That's so funny. Little love trails there. Uh, Laura says, do you have two or three go-to designs? Absolutely. Swirls, dot to dot, and like a wishbone. If you can do some of that stuff, if you can do continuous curve or some kind of more custom block thing and a swirl, you can quilt almost any quilt, any quilt that you they come across well i'm uh, maybe <laughs> swirl, swirl. i mean you can use a swirl in so many different ways and you can quilt it on so many different quilts is that your favorite then swirls yeah. so, uh, I, would think, I would say so i think they're pretty fun to do mm -hmm. but sometimes it's hard to get those lines perfectly spaced my my issue is seeing the foot and being like wait how far am i from the line that i just quilted and then going around and around and around um becca says angela is my inspiration for every bit of free motion quilting i've ever done Aww. um and tiffany is asking, Angela, do you ever watch other YouTube creators to get inspiration when in a slump? So here's what's funny about me. I don't tell many people this. I don't like watching videos. Really? I don't. I, and I think it's just because of that short attention span I have. I'm like, I don't, I, and I try when I edit my videos to keep them pretty fast moving. Yeah. Like I do a lot of chopping out just to kind of, um, and so like, I'm always like, oh, Here's why we're gonna learn. I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but like, here's why we're gonna learn this. And I would just, I like to find an article and skim it. Yeah. Um, so really, Flipboard is where I go. So that's like it kind of con uh, aggregates blog posts and articles, and then I can just flip through it, and that's where I go for inspiration. And so I've never heard of that before. I love it. It's 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 such a. I'm, but I'm a geek. I, I read. <laughs> I love to read. I'm in there in the toilet on Flipboard. Other people are playing games. And I'm like. Oh, interesting. I can, you can say it's cool because you can save articles in different folders. That's and really so interesting. I have one like content creation. So like if an article comes up, especially, I really love, okay, so innovation is taking something from one area and using it in a different area. Mm -hmm. So I don't look to a lot of quilting stuff. Yeah. Um, just because I don't want to be inspired by something, you know, there's going to be cr crossover. I mean, yeah. that just, they can only make a nine patch so many different ways. Yeah. But I love looking at other content creators, so I, I usually read articles about it. That's like, really interesting. New, new content marketing trends and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and what's fun about the industry, though, is I get a good little buffer, right? So, like, when Snapchat became a thing, I'm like, oh, I got about four or five more years before I have to worry about that <laughs> until, you know, like, yeah. that's not where my, not, for the most part, that's not where my audience is, yeah. right? And so... Um, so it's kind of fun. I can kind of look and learn and then, and then apply it. That's interesting. I'm going to have to go check that out. It sounds like a Pinterest for all of that. It's like Pinterest um, for all of that. For blog posts. Crystal says, how do you keep designs consistent in size and how close do you keep the design? Oh, so here's the bad answer. Practice. So the thing is, it, I always relate it. I, I got an analogy for everything, by the way, but I always relate it back to handwriting. Like when we learned how to write our name, we wrote our letters different sizes. Remember sometimes your name would fall off the edge and you have to put the letter underneath <laughs> there. It's like half the and then the Y is down here. <laughs> um, but then the more you do it, the more consistent you get. Yeah. And I always tell groups, I'm like, if you were to write your name on a line, I guarantee you it would fit on there. It okay. would. And what, how does it do that? How do you know how to space that out? How yeah. do you do that? You just had a lot of practice at yeah, it. And so that's that. the main difference. So usually in classes, I tell people, we're not going to worry about consistent spacing or tension right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn the designs. And then at the end, if it hasn't solved itself, I'll give you some practical tips. But ultimately practice but it's that muscle memory it will come and you'll just click now the spacing I normally use is I like quarter inch ish because I like to run my foot along mm -hmm. that previously quilted line I say that all the time but it's so true because it's like <laughs> I can look ahead and just like whoop, use it yeah. as a guide 
I need to get better at that. Some feet are just so hard to see. Like, my thing is I can't see the needle. You're and not like, supposed to look at the needle. It's so hard. You gotta look ahead. It's but so it's, hard. It's like driving a car, right? You don't look at the hood. Exactly. You're on down the road. But I know because you're like, oh. where is it? Like, if you're swimming laps, you want to look ahead of where you're swimming. Exactly. Right? Before, Before you, you run into a, a wall. Yes. Yes. So same kind of thing. And our last question from Sewing with Luane says, how did she score buying the schoolhouse? Every time Jeremy has told me no to something, it has always worked out better, which is very frustrating in the moment, just so you know. He's like, it, it must suck being married to somebody who's right all the time. I'm like, yes, it does, just so you know. So when there was a, when we had the shop, it's great, but it's not huge. Mm -hmm. And as we were doing classes, we had started building up our block of the month. I'm like, I don't have an office anymore. I can't, I, I can't really work there because people yeah. are coming in and not even that they want to talk to me. It's because I want to talk to them. I'm way I'm like, Hey, <laughs> Hey, they're like, get back here, do your work. So I was working from home more than me in the shop. So, um, the, there was a space next to us that became open for sale. And so all my employees and I were trying to get my husband to buy it. And he's like, I'm not paying retail for non-retail. Now here's the thing about Jeremy. He is a business savant. He can take the emotion out of any business wow. uh, decision. And so, like, when we were deciding, backstory, when we were deciding to buy the um, building or the shop, he's like, well, I don't know. I mean, if I take that money and just invest it, I might be able to get more money. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, but that's, so anyway, he didn't want to pay retail price for a retail spot. He's like, well, we'll have to look for something else. Well, then this building, the schoolhouse came up for sale by owner. It was a sad situation. The gentleman that had fixed it up and owned it, he had a stroke. Oh, wow. And so he, he was a motivational speaker and he wasn't able to continue. So mm -hmm. he was selling it. And so I was like, so we have a parking lot this close to the square. <laughs> yeah. And so now this is, it's great because just, we've had it for about uh, four or five years. I'm not good with numbers. Um, but really within the last year and a half is when we've filled it up. So we finally have filled up all the rooms with different things. And it, it kind of represents my brain because every room has a different function. I'm like, oh, this is my build a room. Here's my filming room. Here's what. So um, that's how I scored being patient and when it came up and getting a good deal. So it, it's been very, very, uh, very great for our business to have. It's it. really cool. We pulled up and she was like, I think this was a school. Like, mm -hmm. what? This is a really cool building. And you can see a nice little church over mm -hmm. there. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's a really Just two blocks area. away from the shop. Yeah. yeah. It used to be the kindergarten school for Liberty. And then it um, went into private school hands. And then it went into private ownership and mm -hmm. they redid it all so when you say schoolhouse it doesn't really reflect what yeah. it looks like think of like a I don't know, brick big brick building but anyway yeah. so anything that you see like the color the decor I did not do that came with the building it's beautiful it's so fun too Thanks. and it reflects your creative I mean colors quilts yeah. everywhere of mm -hmm. course it's mm -hmm. really fun so um that's it for today thank you to Angela for taking the for time to be with us today like honestly I was just flabbergasted my mother-in-law my sister-in-law like just ask her just go and shoot your shot I'm like but I'm gonna be putting her on the spot and I don't want her and you were just like yes yes I would love to do that I mm -hmm. love doing that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and so just thank you so much I it love means a it lot. yeah I love doing it and I, I think that's I, I don't know I've benefited from other people sharing their experience and and I'm, when you get done, I, when you get done, I'm going to ask you what you're using here because I kind of like how that <laughs> yeah, works. Yeah, so I would definitely show you. always it. learn from other people. Yeah, and that's another thing. My husband does all that. So we'll give Austin some credit. Our husbands are a really good support system. Mm -hmm. So go, Austin. Mm -hmm. um, I'll let you guys all get on with the rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed the interview today. And I will see you very shortly for some live sewing. Tomorrow we have a live FPP session. So let's make a Christmas table runner together and learn foundation paper piecing. Bye, everybody.